Hi, and welcome to this installment of uh, Frank and Mary on the Vineyard. Um, as you know, if you watched the previous show, this is my co-host, Sandy Cordoli. You've, you've probably seen all of, both of us before quite a bit. And today we have a terrific guest named Donald Sostek. Now, if you, you've probably heard that name before. If, you, uh, if you're a senior and you've heard of, oh, somebody's getting 24-7 care. Well, that's from Sostek. And I remember first hearing that name like five or six years ago when I was here. But I thought didn't, saw it, didn't, if that person didn't exist. I thought that was just like a brand, like that was the Sostek product. And then, it, but it turned out there's a real guy, Donald Sostek. And, and a real life boy. And Sandy Cordoby introduced me to him, right? And I actually went to his office once, his, his old office in, in Newton, Newton that's correct. and learned the backstory about Donald Sostek. So we're going to talk about what you guys are doing now, what you're doing now. Sure. But I want you to start off by talking what you did then. Sure. Right? So how sure. did Sostek? Are you, the, are you the first? His daughter Absolutely the first? Absolutely not. No. No. no, the company was founded in 1955 by my mother. I was just a boy. Yes, you were. You were non-existent. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. My mother, Cecily Sostek, was the founder, and she had this vision of, uh, of home care. But her vision for home care was with newborn babies. So we started at the other end of the, the life spectrum. Spectrum. And uh, she had a very, very successful maternity care company mm -hmm. that ran exclusively as maternity care from about 1955 till probably the early 80s. And that was based kind of in and around Newton? Was that around that section or was it? A, it was like uh, the greater Boston Greater area. Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she ran a very successful company, but after a number of years, she started talking about retirement. And one day I said to her, I was out of college and I was working, uh, not in that field. And I said, yeah. I said, Mom, you've built up so much goodwill. You know, it was a, yeah. a, an accounting term yeah. that I'd learned in college. Yeah. I was going to show her all that money she spent in college was, was worth paying one. off. Was worth one. That's so right. I told her about all this goodwill she had built up and how she couldn't retire and she couldn't just close the doors. Yeah. And she looked at me straight in the eye and she said, and what are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. I guess I knew my answer to that. And, and there you were. There I was. And there you were. So we sort of had an agreement that uh, my interest was in senior care, yeah, yeah. Uh, not in maternity care. Yeah. And uh, we decided to have me come in and, and build a senior care division uh, to complement her maternity care. I and see. Then, as she phased out, we phased out the uh, the baby nurse side of the business. Except that you told me that one of your mother's, uh, one of your obligations was to actually, you couldn't phase out until all the baby nurses had retired. Absolutely. And that's why she stayed involved, was to make sure that you didn't, that you took care of her baby nurses. Oh, she wanted those baby yeah. nurses taken care of. And, and now you just do senior care? Exclusively senior care. And, yeah. and, and, and Newton, I mean, to folks here is about the other side of the universe from Absolutely. here. So, so how, and I think similarly from Newton, Nantucket's a long ways away. So Absolutely, yeah. how did you end up being in Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard? How did you end up being in Martha's Vineyard? So that's a very interesting story. I was at a, uh, I was actually at a hospice conference. Yeah. Uh, I think it was out in Marlboro. And um, I was sitting at the, uh, the lunch table and many nurses were at this conference yeah. and we're going around and we're exchanging business cards and telling people what we do. And uh, after we uh, got finished talking, uh, a lovely woman came over and said, could I get a couple of extra of your business cards? I'm from Martha's Vineyard. And we would really be interested in learning more about your live-in program on yeah. Martha's Vineyard. And, uh, and, that's, and that's how it started. That's how it started. But one of the, the most important things that she told me, yeah. she said, if you're going to be doing this on Martha's Vineyard, you want to go over to the hospital and you want to talk to a woman named Sandy. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> so we, this is a great yeah. story. So we went over to the hospital and your receptionist at the time uh, did what a good receptionist does and a good gatekeeper and said, yeah. um, she's, she's not very busy right yeah. now. She's not able to see you. Yeah. And so I gave her my one minute, I gave the receptionist my one minute elevator speech. And I think Sandy heard some or, or all of that from her office. Yeah. And while we were being shooed out the door, Sandy came into the hallway and said, excuse me, could I gotta, see you here for a moment? A second. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's and a great, that's that, a great that story. I, and I, that's such a vivid, wonderful memory that uh, Sandy took the time 
to listen to us and hear what we did. And, and what you she did. knew that not only was that a, a valuable and needed resource at that time, yeah. but she knew that would be a future needed resource as well. And, and, and once again, fast forwarding. So when I started coming here, I, I would just hear this name. Whenever there was somebody that was doing 24 seven care, I would always hear Sostec, right? And that was why, and I said, and once again, I just figured that that was a brand. So can you tell me, I heard it was Sostec and 24 seven care, but that was all I know, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, I know more now, but can you tell me so that we can all, all kind of start off with how Sostec works? How, how, does sure. the, how does the company work? Sure. And, I, and specifically, the difference between, just because I want our viewers to understand, there's a big difference between 24 7 care and live in care. So, ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, an excellent yeah. point. Yeah. An excellent point. Yeah. A, a difference Every once in a while, I, I come up with one. Which is why I said 24 <laughs> And th that's a good point. So, yeah. let me try to just. Uh, shed some light on that first. Yeah. So 24 hour care is what you would think. It's someone is in the home yeah. every hour of every day. That's 24 hour care. When you're the patient, it really matters whether that's being delivered by one person or whether it's being delivered by a number of people. And sometimes that group that constitutes the team, yeah. that provides the 24-hour care, sometimes those members will switch in and out of the team. So as a, as a business model for a business person, they may look at the economics behind it, they may look at the efficiency behind it, and I think if you're approaching it just from a business perspective, there's a lot of merit to that. Yeah. But if you're a senior who is struggling to remain independent in your own home and you're going to have to have help what's important to you is that of the, as that individual is the relationship that you have with that person who's caring for you and it's just more difficult to have a relationship with many people during a very difficult time in your life. And I, I was just gonna say, I would assume if you're a person in need of 24 seven care, then you're in need of a lot of care. Yeah. So you're just at that, at that point in your life, whether it is because you have physical issues or because you have co some cognitive issues, memory sure. issues or whatever, sure. that, that, that even makes it harder to sure. be seeing all these different people that are they're showing up. You know, especially the, the, yeah, you, know, you make a yeah. good point, Arthur, especially the cognitive issues because it's like who is that person? yeah yeah it, it can be very confusing when you're developing a relationship with one of your caregivers in a in a large team yeah. and then there's another caregiver and they they don't deal with you the same way right they don't reach you emotionally the same way as another person the question in that person's mind especially if they're a little bit confused is where is my caregiver that i like because right. they know who they like they may right. not know their name, but they know who they like. So right. it can be more difficult. And I think that our healthcare system, especially in terms of home care, has to ask what's really in the best interest of the patient. Of the patient. Yeah. And I, but I suppose from the perspective of the agency, the entity that is trying to deliver that 24-7 care to, mm -hmm. they've got some real economic issues in terms of they can't be having an employee who is showing up and is there for more than sure. so many hours. Sure. I, I keep thinking of the magic Obamacare number, 30 hours a week. All of a, yeah. Now all of a sudden, there are all kinds of issues, sure. right? Sure. And, yeah. so, and so it, it's like there, that business model almost works in opposition to this notion of having the same person there for like long It really does, it, you're absolutely right. It works yeah. in opposition to the, the notion of consistency yeah. and continuity and relationship building. And those things, if you're um, a frail senior who is homebound, those yeah. are very important issues that sometimes uh, the business community as a healthcare, when you look at the entity as a business, they yeah. may not put enough weight on that, they may not understand it well enough. But if you were to talk to that, that senior who's home dependent on the care, that's a very critical issue to them. So I guess, so I know we're co-hosts, but I get to ask you stuff too. So I guess I'd be interested in how that has developed and how you've seen that develop, that, that, that kind of the, the role of in home care as it relates to 24-7 care over the last few years 
how, where, these, where, where do these people come from, right? What have, what have you seen as the problems with, with that kind of care delivery and, 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 and you know, what, can, what can be done to improve that if there are problems? And, and then where do you see it going? I'm just kind of interested in all of those things. And I know, Sandy, so Sandy, obviously you're talking with a lot of folks because you're, you're the kind of the geriatric care manager, so you're seeing people that have various kinds of needs, right, in terms of hours and in terms of kind of the people that they need, right? How, you know, how do you see all that playing out? And how has it evolved? <clears throat> Uh, once again, I've been coming now for about 12 years. I'm getting to be an old a veteran here, right? But how, is it, how has it been playing out? It's fair, been, is that a fair question? It, yeah. I think how it's been playing out, we'll just concentrate on that yeah. question for now, but um, how it's playing out is, is when, um, when I started doing this kind of work, um, the geriatric case management work, but I was at the V&A before that, and, and so sort of being in people's homes and taking care of elder people has been going on with me for a little over 25 years. Um, and, and the trend is, is that um, I would have about nine to 11 soft tech caregivers on the island at a time. And, and we thought that was a lot. Mm, yeah. um, it's a small community. Um, right. And that was maybe somewhere in the range of four to five years ago. As of last Friday, we had 54. 54. 54 live-in caregivers on Martha's Vineyard um, just from soft tech. You know, there are other companies that provide a different kind of live-in model, but just from SauceTech, there are 54. And uh, so our two companies have so many people together that we actually have a meeting every, mo every Friday morning on the phone from the mothership up in Franklin now um, and, and us here at Horizons to make sure that we know where everybody is and what they're doing and how it's going. Yeah. Um, and the, the reason why that number has grown so incredibly is our elder population is growing so that it would grow, but also what you and I talk about all the time is the shortage of those people that would provide the 24 seven or even the eight hour a day care on the vineyard. Um, that human resource is still in big trouble we're working on it. We will continue to work on it. Um, we're coming up with lots of great ideas, but at the moment, if you need um, four or five hours in the morning and four or five hours in the evening, I'm probably going to tell you that the best way to find that, especially in the summertime, is to buy the whole package. Buy a living. And and economically, I I put it that way. That right, right. Yeah. Eco because because if if you need that seven days a week. It is going to be several different people because nobody's got that kind of time um, in the caregiver world right now. Um, and economically, um, in, with our rate right now in the private sector of $25 to $30 an hour for a caregiver, um, and so we, we use an all-in price. Um, if you're purchasing about 10 hours a day for, of care because a lot of elders sleep right through the night and don't, they, they don't need an overnight person. Right. But if you're purchasing about 10 hours a day, um, you're up around the $300 range a day for your care. And that is pretty much the same as with the all-in cost of a live-in. Of doing, of doing a live-in. Right, so 10 hours for the same money that you get the 24-7. Yeah. Um, again, it, it, sometimes it just comes down to good math. And, that, and, and maybe, and that I probably, I would assume, is the reason why you've moved from nine to 54 people, because a lot of people are Certainly doing, part of it. A lot of people are doing yeah. the math. Yeah. So, so he, who who are the who are the who are these folks? How do you find these folks? Uh, are they are they all from off island? Are they are they folks who have been doing caregiving all their life? Who who are the who are the caregivers who would tend to be willing to actually move into somebody's house, mm. which is obviously not everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? No, no, it really isn't everybody. Uh, there are not of not a lot of local individuals that that want to move into someone's house. And remember, all of these individuals, they have an apartment or a home somewhere else. Right. Um, so they, it's not their home. They're not, they're not living in a person's house and calling it their home. That's right. their place of employment because right. they have a home. But they are willing to give up much of their personal life to dedicate, yeah, dedicate that's a, that's to, a big deal. Right. to uh, an individual uh, who wants someone there with them all the time. So um, we actually, the last time we advertised for individuals was, got to think back because it was a while ago. I want to say it was 1986. I don't, I don't was get it. It was the last time we advertised. 
For uh, caregivers. These, yeah. yeah. So these people just show up? Well, not really. So what we do is we... we <laughs> look, 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 Margie, there are three people in our office today. We've they developed, care, we've developed a, a wonderful network yeah. of individuals. Yeah. And we ask them that if they know other wonderful individuals that share their philosophy about compassion, about reliability, uh, integrity, honesty, yeah. if they know of other people that possess these characteristics and qualities, as well as having the skills, obviously, yeah. Yeah. Um, we would like to meet them. We would like to vet them. And the, the caregivers that we meet come from pretty much anywhere in the world. So we could have people from uh, Africa. Mm -hmm. We could have people from Central America, uh, South America. Um, you know, we, we want to meet people who are really good at this yeah. and are willing to dedicate themselves to this kind of work. Florida? <laughs> They're just from literally all over. All, all over. over, yeah. From all so over. So the criteria is, are you outstanding? Uh, are you well-skilled? Um, do you have a good background? Do you have good experience? Those are the things. We don't really care where a person calls home. So t talk about, if, are you well-skilled? What does that mean in this context? So if you're familiar with, say, Windermere. Yeah. Okay, so Windermere wants a person who can pass a certified nursing assistant uh, exam, mm -hmm. okay? And you will need, and Sandy can speak to this much better than I. Um, as the teacher of the certified. As the teacher of the, of the course. <laughs> the but they need certain skills yeah. that allow them to do what we call hands-on care. And because the individual caregiver is the employee of the family, they are pretty much allowed to do what they and the family agree is going to be their They're job. Yeah. yeah. So because we're, as our name implies, Sostec, a caregiver referral company, we're not a home health care agency. Right. We don't employ any of the caregivers. So these people in that house are not your employees. That is correct. They're the employee of the person who is getting the care of that person. That's family. correct. And that's, that's something that we believe in very strongly because uh, I believe that the, the customer should have choice in, in this matter. They should be able to choose who comes into their home and how long they stay. Um, so some, for some folks, uh, an employer agency who, the agency is the employer, which is the more common business model around, right. that works great for most people. But for some folks, it doesn't work well for them because they want more control and more choice. And to get the control and to get the choice, you really have to be the household employer. And then you call the shots, how many hours the person works, right. uh, whether you want to pay overtime or not is, should be the, the choice of the, the family. And I suppose kind of built into that is the fact that if you are, the more hours you need per day, the more you need to be trying to find, the, the more trying to find one person is going, to be the, is going to be the real answer as opposed to just having yeah. a whole bunch. Whereas right. if you only need a few hours, it probably makes sense sure. to have an agency that is, whose employees are providing a few hours to a bunch of people, but it all adds up to a, day, a, 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 day, a reasonable amount of money. Sure. Whereas if you're full time, well then that, that can add up to enough money so that it, justif it justifies sure. having a person sure. to be Absolutely. doing that all the time. I want to speak to how do we pick the right person? You know, how do we figure that, that out? Yeah. How do we figure out who is the right person? And, and one of the reasons why I love the SauceTech um, philosophy and their program is I can interview one of my clients and find out, is there a cat or a dog in the house? Do you need your caregiver to be able to drive? Do you need them to have their own car? Do you need them to have experience giving an insulin injection? Do you want someone who has experience with Parkinson's disease? Do you want someone who has experience with Alzheimer's disease? Or with things that caught, with, do, with dementia symptoms. Do you yeah, want you someone who has, a, who has an interest and a sensitivity to art or music? So once I... And, and that goes to this, what I had said about, so what are the skills? Right. You're, you're saying it's right. really, it's a matching it's exercise. It's a matching There are standard skills. Yeah, yeah. Now we're, we're seeing more and more elders because the baby boomers are, you know, the earlier baby boomers are now coming on. Um, we're seeing more and more elders with long-term care insurance policies such as Genworth or Unum or John Hancock or any of those. 
Um, the policies will also dictate, because they'll pay for the service, um, the policies will also dictate what certificate the person needs. So we put in that we need a CNA or an HHA, home health aide or certified that's nursing assistant. Certified nursing assistant. And assistant we need somebody home. that's not allergic to cats. And we need somebody that knows how to swim because there's a pool. And we need someone that can drive. And we put all of this into the SOSTEC database. And it pulls from a large database of caregivers, um, the person that would meet several people. And the SOSTEC staff will then say, Sandy, I have these caregivers. And because I've been doing this for more than 25 years, I know these caregivers. And I've worked with most You've all of them. You've actually seen a lot of the caregivers. In the home. At some point, arm they've cycled arm, through. Hand in hand, in home. I'm writing the care plans. I'm supervising what they're doing. SOSTEC has vetted them in that they have run their quarries. They've run their driving record. They've gotten amazing references. They've looked at their education. They've looked at their certificates. So they're... We know a lot about these people before we recommend to the family, I think you should try Eunice. Yep. Here's a, a little bit about Eunice. Here are her references. You can interview her over the phone or through Skype, but you probably can't interview her face to face because she may live in Texas. Right. But she will come up and I will reassure you that if because Eunice, they may live, in Texas. They may live they, they don't could, live they, here. Many people live all over. All over. Yeah. Isn't so that, what the, an interesting pool of people. And then you can, if by chance, and 99% and of the time we get it, yeah. if by yeah. chance the match isn't perfect, we can fix that very quickly, very quietly and with no awkwardness to the family or the caregiver. Right. We move them somewhere else and we bring in another. Right. So, and, I, and I suppose as a legal matter, be, as the relationship between the caregiver and the, and the, and the, and the, the, the person at home, the family. Right, there's no you know, big deal about, no. oh, you know, no, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to sue. This is going to oh, be, no, no. I demand to be able to stay in this because you've taken care of that. Oh, right? no, 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 no. There's never a problem like that. I mean, we've talked about those lists that exist and, and those are scary lists of people that have put their name on a list and want to be considered. I mean, you really should, as I say every time we talk, you need to use an agency and somebody that has vetted these people and right. knows them and, and knows um, they're a professional. Yeah. The beauty of, of the situation is that the caregiver, as much as the customer, wants it to be a perfect fit. Yes. Because they're there a lot of time. A lot. And so it, they... It isn't just a job. Well, you can't walk away from. I mean, if you not if you're walking away to Texas, you know you you you're really they can there. they can, yeah. but they really want it to be a good fit for both the customer and for them, yeah. and that's what's so important because, for the seasoned veteran caregivers, yeah. if they've been doing this ten or fifteen years, it's highly unlikely that they haven't run into a family somewhere along the way that wasn't a good fit for either one of them. Right. And the best thing to do is to acknowledge that here's where we missed because it's, it's all about customer choice. Right. So the customer gets to say whether this person is right for me. Now, mind you, they're not saying, they very rarely say, this is not a good person or this is not a good caregiver. What they typically say is, we've hired someone who's not the best fit and we'd like to choose from another pool. And that, that opportunity is always available to them. And I suppose what, because you've developed such a large pool. So can you go back to, I'm, I'm, try, I'm imagining myself now as the caregiver, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm living in this person's home, mm -hmm. and I'm spending a lot of time there because otherwise i got to go to Texas, right? Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> or but, go on to but, another job. Right, but what, <laughs> so what's the definition of, of when I'm in, on the job? Am I on the job all the time? No, no. How, how, how typically... And I bet this varies from caregiver. To yeah. Each relationship yeah. is going to be different. Right. Give me a typical example, so if there is one. Caregivers will, will tell you that they have a lot of downtime. Yeah. There's a tremendous amount of downtime when they're in, in the home on this uh, live-in basis. So they, they work it out with the family um, so that they have time to themselves. And Sandy's a wonderful advocate for caregivers. Uh, she used to uh, talk about She's really the one that taught me about caregiver burnout and that how difficult these jobs are. And it's very important um, for the families to, to be educated and to understand that caregivers can't work all the time. We, we do get a call every now and then 
from someone who is new to the, the situation, and, and they think that caregivers can work uh, you know, like uh, machinery. You know? 24 seven. Yep, all night yeah. and all day. We yeah, just yeah. remind them, no, no, these, these are, these are people, yeah. <laughs> just like the but rest of us. that's where we use community resources <clears throat> to help them. Typically, you know, when the elder is laying down and having a rest, so yeah. is the caregiver. It's kind of like the baby nurse thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back to right. that again. Right. Um, so they have the downtime that Donald's talking about, the, or the elder maybe having dinner with his family, and, and has had all of his needs met and has gotten to the table and sitting there and enjoying dinner with his family and the caregiver's gonna go off to their room because not only do they need a little bit of downtime themselves, but they wanna also not in, you know, get into the middle of the family relationship. Right. They wanna honor that and make sure that they're as small a part of the picture as possible, yeah. yet meeting the needs, and they are tremendously good at that. We also use a lot of the community resources through Elder Services and the Supportive Day program and all of those great programs that you and I talk about all the time um, to, to help offset some of the day right. um, so, that they, so that the caregivers have a balance of getting out and going for a walk. I have a caregiver that um, is on a, a professional basketball team in New York and she, in her training, she runs She's for an hour a, a day. She's on a professional basketball she team? Is. Um, and um, this and is she, built into the caregiver contract. Uh, like absolutely. I'll be there every day, except when we got a game. Except for these three days, every three months. <laughs> except and, for the World uh, Championships. Exactly. <laughs> and but great. she runs every day. She yeah. she runs as part of her training. And there's someone that comes in and sits with her elder while yeah. she. So her life continues on, and 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 because we have so many caregivers from Sauce Tech on the end, um, the Memory Cafe at um, the Center for Living Center on for Thursdays which is amazing, um, from 10 to 12. The most successful memory cafe in the it state right now. It is so wonderful. Actually, it actually is. And it, you know, it, it, it happens more often with more people than any place else. It is such an amazing, if you haven't like been there, 60. you need yeah. to go you and see go. it. I don't you care gotta, yeah. if you have a memory issue or not, it's a blast. Anyway, if you walk in, you will see many of the elders, and there is a group of the Sauce Tech caregivers also sitting together, and, and they have created a social circle among them so that they've got peers to talk to and to commiserate with yep. and to share ideas and how do you get him to take a shower because that's so, a biggie so by the way that leads me to to the, the question now that you've described this because i had no literally before we started talking a little bit before i had no idea there were that many caregivers so i guess the and your of your sense of the importance of this model but if that's the model or if that's a, an important piece of the totality of what's here then I guess the question is, what can Martha's Vineyard do? What can the community do to be causing that model to grow in terms of having the kind of, the, you were just talking about, like almost like a, it's like a caregiver support group among the professional caregivers, right? It, what can be done to be kind of encouraging this as, as a way of handling or, or dealing with folks who need a lot of care? Because as you're describing it, it's sound, it sounding like, pretty much for everybody who needs a lot of care, right? In most cases, this model works the best. So to the extent that we're trying to develop a community where, you, like Frank and Mary, you can live in your house until you die and be buried in the backyard, right? So if, 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 you, if that means that you, you want a, a system which really allows people, even if they need a lot of care to be able to stay home, that means you need a lot of these kinds of caregivers. Well, that's so a, how do that's you a really it? interesting question because yeah. if if we're really going to be as a community, oh, way, every once in a while I have to go like this in order to find out what the time is. That's because our friend Carl Holt put the clock over there instead of over here, so I don't have a tick. <laughs> what, it's come, Carl's fault. I'm doing this. Okay, <laughs> that, thank you. But you know, we got back to we're, we're getting back, get back to, to Carl shortly. But the so issue sorry. of of the, the number of hourly uh, people that are available who yep. live here, where yep. the uh, the island is their home, yep. and the. The group of individuals that lives on Martha's Vineyard and does hourly work, they are one of the biggest assets to a family who uses live-in caregivers because that's where oh. some of the respite comes from. Because it's the respite, among so other yeah. things. Yeah, there, yeah. There's a limit because sometimes if there's not enough respite to go around, what happens is families will then choose to hire a second live-in caregiver so that so that you can rotate in the, the care the can caregivers. be provided that way. That's that's not a great system. No, it's, and it, as a community, it's used by our customers but, in in limited instances. But, but it really would be better to have a, a robust right. workforce on on the island 
where these folks can go in for four hour shifts or six hour shifts yeah, or two yeah. hour shifts yeah. to provide respite you know, to the families and their privately hired caregivers. Or even to continue our work to train HH home health aides and certified nursing assistants to be available to Greater Boston, Best of Care, and Cape Cod VNA, which are wonderful organizations who would be happy to provide a second pair of hands to a living caregiver to help with a shower with someone who really needs two people to help them with a shower. I see. But we've got to continue to build that workforce because we are dependent on those agencies to help these folks. Right, right. Um, so it is, it's the, it's almost, what the- It's almost counterintuitive that someone from a, a live-in resource is promoting that there should be other right. you know, hourly services here, not provided by us, but to be provided to our customers. But once again, it's because it's providing that infrastructure. Sure. I keep always trying sure. to think about this whole issue of creating a dementia-friendly community in terms of, like, which I always have heard me say it many times, basically a community where no matter how confused I get, I can be safe and I can live in my community and I'm not gonna be embarrassed. Yeah. But how do I do that if I've really got a lot of memory problems and I'm on Martha's Vineyard, you know? So I've got, I don't have a jillion people around. And this model, it just really is striking. It's growing and it's yeah. gonna continue yeah, yeah. to grow. And what can the community do? When you see an elder who's struggling, call someone. Call Horizons, I'll make the right calls. Um, call your Council on Aging. Um, I called Communication Center yesterday because in the middle of a traffic jam at the Triangle, there was an elder walking down the center of oh, the yellow lines we were on a phone saying call. hello you, to people. I was calling you from the yes, and you said, oh wait, exactly. I gotta get off this call, there's a woman running, walking down the There was someone who was clearly street. confused, walking <laughs> in, weaving in yep. and out of traffic and yep. saying hello to people in their cars, very confused. And so call someone and, yeah. and get somebody that knows how to help that person That's be great. safe. That's great. Now, before we leave, <laughs> and Carl, you can't cut this. Nope. This is a big moment here because this is Carl Holt's birthday. Uh, and he's actually at work, not because he really wants to be here. But they dragged him in here, right, despite the fact that it's his birthday. So at least he gets a song out of this. So, mm, oh God. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Carl. Happy birthday to you. And Carl, you have to put, you put a picture of yourself here when, when right. you're doing us singing. And this. your haircut looks great, Carl. Looks great. Beautiful, Carl. Looks great. So, thank you very much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary uh, on the Vineyard. Thank you.